Hey, I'm Eric, and welcome to what's going to be the first part of a series on exploring some principles of software engineering and design. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at something today called onion architecture. And this is a way of organizing your software and making sense of how you're going to put it together and make sure that it's scalable and can adapt to a lot of different situations. So to understand the problem that onion architecture is trying to solve, the first thing we need to look at is how software traditionally has been designed. So traditionally, at the center of the world is a SQL database. If you have a particular problem, you're going to look at this database and think of how can I represent that in terms of tables and relationships. And you're going to build an application on top of that in order to allow a user to interact with it. So if you have your user up here, your user is going to talk to the application and the application is going to talk to the database. So the center of the application is a representation of the database. This is the data tier or data access layer. And then on top of that is the business logic layer where we're going to do a little bit of additional uh, logic on top of what our database is doing. And then at the beginning is the web tier. So the user interacts with your application through the web, then interacts with the business logic, which then is going to connect to the database. So the problem with this is that if you have a change to your database, like let's say we're going to change to a different database or maybe make a fundamental change in how we're thinking about our data. Instead of a relational database, we're going to try to model it as a non-relational or NoSQL database. So that'll cause the database to change, which will cause the data access layer to change. And since that database and the data access is the center of how we've been thinking about our application, that change will then cause changes rippling up through the business layer and even into the web layer. So anytime you're making a significant change to your database uh, with that approach of having your database in the center of the world, you're basically going to end up causing your entire application to have to be majorly refactored or rewritten. So the alternate to this is to think instead of the database and the shape of the data, think about how somebody is going to interact with your application. So the first thing we're going to try to define is what does our application do? So we're going to come up with a few use cases for our application. Uh, so we're going to think of a basic e-commerce application as an example, where you can have a user uh, log in, they can create an order, they can add items to the order. In addition to that, they can check out the order when they're ready to purchase it. So when we look at these use cases, we're going to take a look at the language in here, and we're going to uncover a pattern in here based on how we're talking about it. First thing we're going to do is look at the verbs, which we're using create, add, and checkout, and then the nouns. So those objects that exist within the language of our business. We see order being used over and over again, and items being uh, contained within an order. So that concept of having an order, an order can contain items, uh, that's going to become our domain model. So a domain model is basically the concept of writing really, really pure code to represent the language of your business. I'm going to go up here and we'll erase our old way of doing this and put it at the center of the world. Instead of our database at the center, we're going to put our domain model. And that'll contain our order and our item. Now that we've defined that, we're going to go back down to what our application does and expand on some of this a little bit. We're going to take a look at checkout in particular and define that as having two major steps. The first step is going to be that we mark order as complete in the database. And then we're going to send a confirmation email. So those steps, as we define them, are going to be what make up our application layer, which is what comes next. So this application layer basically has these steps to actually create the business processes of uh, our application. So we're going to draw that as a concentric circle. And you'll start to see why this is called onion architecture. These are going to be uh, layers that are built on top of this core with the domain model being the center of the core, and then we're going to build on top of that. And here, we're going to put our application use cases. 
And those use cases are just going to be those actions that we listed previously of what you can do with your application. If we go back down, we're not putting our database as the center anymore, but we do have a concept of data persistence. We know that we are going to have to, at some point in here, save our order out to some kind of persistent storage, and we need an ability to mark it as complete at the end. We already kind of stipulated that that's how our application works. So we're going to see we have a database and an email service of some kind there, some uh, ability to send emails. The way we're going to do this is back in our model up here, we're going to basically punch a couple of holes in our application layer and leave a particular shaped hole in there. So in this case, I'm going to leave a database shaped hole, which I'm just going to represent as a puzzle piece and a email service shaped hole. That I'm going to represent as a different puzzle piece. So our application layer knows about the concept of these things and knows about the concept of a database, but it doesn't know anything about the actual implementation details of it. So right now we have our domain model, which is that really pure code that just represents the language of our business. We have the application use cases that actually model how we're doing what we're doing in our application. And now we need to actually make it so this application does something. So right now, uh, it's great code, but nobody pays us to write code. They pay us to solve problems and actually do things. So if nobody can use our application, nobody can use our code, it's no good. So we need a interface. So up here, we're going to make a web UI. That web UI is going to call into our application's use cases. That code is then going to interact with the core domain model we have, and it's eventually going to call some of these ex external services as well, like our database. So the web UI is basically an abstraction at the edge of us. If we wanted to switch that out with some other type of user interface, let's say we want a mobile app, it can talk to those same exact use cases. Maybe we need an API so that automated clients can talk to our code, and that can talk to it as well. And the application doesn't need to know about those, and the domain model doesn't need to know about that as well. So in order now to make it so our application can actually talk to other services in our system, we're going to fill in those holes that we left earlier. So in object-oriented terms, we've left an interface, and now we're going to implement it. So we have our same old SQL server out here, ex uh, external to our application. And then we have, let's say, this is SQL, and this is an SMTP mail service. So we're going to then write a little bit of code here that fills that shape that we left before and plugs in. Same thing with our email service. This way we can call those services. But if we need to, if we need to make a change, let's say that later on we decide that we want to retire our old SMTP server. Instead, we want to use a fancy cloud-based uh, API for emails. So at this point, as long as we can fill that same shape here and plug into that as that implementation of the mail service that we defined in our application layer, we can do that without making any changes. So you can think of this outer layer as essentially the interactions with this application. It's the way that people are going to interact with the application. So I'll draw a person up here and how they interact with that, whether it's through a web UI, a native UI, a mobile uh, application, an API, however it is that they're going to interact with your application's use cases, uh, that can just plug in and that's separate from the application logic itself. Same thing with the dependencies, the service dependencies like SQL Server, any kind of APIs you're talking to, any kind of external services that you're working with, all of those are abstracted away as well. So you can change those really easily as well. And because those are the bits that are most likely to change, be it a redesign of your UI or an upgrade of your SQL Server or switching what cloud service provider you're using, these are the bits we wanna leave closest to the edge so they're the least tied into what our actual application is doing and the actual business logic there. Typically, these are broken down into a couple of different parts in this outermost layer. So I'll call this part here the presentation layer. Over here, where we're plugging in our services. We're going to call that the infrastructure. And then last but not least, we need to make sure our application actually works. So we're going to include tests as well. 
And as a note, we'll, uh, we'll try to include tests at every layer that we can. The more tests, the better. Uh, but we want to make sure explicitly the most important is testing our application use cases so that we know our application actually does what it's supposed to. So this architectural pattern goes by a number of different names, and it'll use different vocabularies depending on where you're looking it up. Uh, if you look at Robert Martin's Clean Architecture, uh, you'll see this use cases uh, used a lot. Um, I love that terminology. I think it's really good. You'll also sometimes see your domain model referred to as entities. I think that term is kind of overloaded, uh, especially with entity framework and .NET being a very popular data access technology. It tends to uh, get a little bit confusing since we're at this point not connecting data access into that core domain model. We don't want any dependencies there. All of our dependencies flow inwards. So we basically start here. The presentation layer depends on the application. The application depends on the domain. And the infrastructure is going to also depend on that application layer. But all of those dependencies are flowing inward. So we don't want to have data access as something that's in that core part of it. So I try to stay away from that terminology, but you will see that used some of the time. You also sometimes see uh, uh, hexagonal architecture thrown around. That's kind of the concept of leaving these holes in your application where you're going to fill it in. And it uh, generally even represents the user interface. Uh, I didn't draw it that way, but it represents the user interface as yet another hole that gets filled in by that outer layer. So with anything in architecture, there's a lot of nuance to it. So if you have any questions, clarifications, please feel free to leave that in the comments. I'll try to get to those as soon as I can. Also, uh, if you like this format and would like to see more, feel free to leave a comment with a suggestion for additional topics that we can explore. Thanks for watching and have a great day.